one symmetric representation of the human brain. And luckily, it can be partitioned into three parts. First part is called the cerebrum. It contains most part of your brain, and it is mainly responsible for doing most of the things that you do, like uh, for uh, perception or for thinking purposes, for memorization, or for movement of your body. All these activities are controlled by this portion. Now, the second portion, this portion is called cerebellum. This is that resides behind your, uh, on the back side of your head, under the cerebrum. And this portion generally coordinates the movement of your body and it's responsible for uh, balance maintenance. The third part is called brain stem. This part uh, connects your brain with your spinal cord. And this part is responsible for the so, uh, spontaneous things like uh, breathing or uh, maintaining the blood pressure or digestion, all those things. Okay, so uh, we will concentrate uh, right now on the cerebrum part. That is uh, the main portion of the brain. Now, uh, different experiments by neurologists and computer scientists have shown that uh, different parts of the cerebrum is responsible for different type of activities that we carry out in our normal day-to-day -day life. So let us see which part is responsible for what type of activity we do. First, this portion is responsible for sensation. Whatever we feel through our skin, those type of activities are decoded in this part. Now the back portion is responsible for uh, visualization. And this portion is responsible for hearing. The frontal portion is responsible for smell. And a large portion of your frontal lobe is responsible for thought processes, making decisions and whatever you plan, those things are carried out in the frontal lobe of the human brain. And, um, sorry. Excuse me. Memorization is not controlled by the whole brain. A particular portion of the brain is devoted for memorization. So this portion is devoted mainly for memorization. And this portion is responsible for voluntary movement. This portion controls the movement of your motor neurons or better say the motor muscles. So uh, as you said that uh, what's the architecture or functional unit of brain? You just say this, neuron, right? So this shows one forest of neurons. The neur these are the neurons. And each neuron has three parts. I guess you all know. What are the parts? The main cell body, the dendrons, and the axon. Right. So this is the main cell body, okay, this is the dendrons. Uh, what's the uh, main purpose of these dendrons? What do they do? Dendrites. Yeah, dendrites. It passes the information from one neuron to the they, they are the receiving end of neurons, right? They uh, take the information yeah. signal from a previous neuron or some other part of their body. So the dendrons that divide further into dendrites, they generally take signals from other neurons or other portion of the body that signal gate process into the cell and that process signal gets through the axon to some other neuron or some other portion of the body, right? And uh, the connecting point where one dendron ends and the axon of other neuron starts, what is that called? Synapse. Synapse. So this is one in large example of synapse. Uh, this is the end of one dendrite and this is Oh, sorry, this is the end of uh, axon and this is the end of dendrite. And uh, the chemicals that are processed in the cell body get transmitted through this uh, dendrite to the next axon. Sorry, from the axon to the dendrite. Okay, and these chemicals are called neurotransmitters. So, these are the two main properties that I said earlier of neurons. What are these two properties without looking at this uh, slide? Tell me once again. Don't look at this slide. <coughs> two properties are there. First, storage. storage. And, and second, learning. learning. Right. So, our network, whatever it may be, it's 
called a neural network if, if it has two properties. First, it should be able to